as I was gonna say, I have something I'd like to share, something stupid. I thought I would enter in my cell phone in, in, in notes, um, the Sanskrit words and the translation. So I would have them written down. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> I, I, I kept turning Anutama into Anita. <laughs> it did not like Sanskrit. <laughs> No. no. It was about six, I don't know, a whole bunch of times and I realized that when I'd written, I had to click on it down at the bottom. But I finally <laughs> managed to get them in. But I'm glad you managed to get them in. Uh, Marion has been waiting for a moment. What, did you have a question? Oh, um, uh, yeah, I guess you could call this a question or a comment. Um, anybody out there read uh, Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? you know, lately enough that, you know, they might recall it well. Um, I, Maybe I read not it in lately college. Enough. <laughs> I read it in college and, you know, I, I couldn't really remember it. Uh, you know, I remember finding a great deal of it in college rather boring, you know, at the time, you know, and so I thought I'd revisit it. And uh, it's a lot more interesting to me now. Um, but um, the I'm listening to the audio book, in fact, which is quite good. Um, but he gets into this discussion of Mu, as in the Cohen Mu. And um, I found myself kind of disagreeing with what he was saying. And I don't know if he's wrong or I'm wrong. Wait, but for, those who know, for those of those uh, who don't know what Mu is, could you explain what that is? Um, okay, so there's a Cohen, does dog have Buddha nature? And the Zen master answers Mu, which technically Mu translates. And this is the part where I'm dif uh, I'm having this disagreement with Robert Piercig. My understanding was that Mu literally means no. And um, so he's saying that. Um, and, and he's saying that Mu means uh, neither yes nor no. And I would say that that might be accurate if you're looking at the whole, the koan as a whole, the point of the koan, right? But the word itself, Mu, I thought means no. So uh, anybody want to take that one? <laughs> Ooh, Tom, yes. What do you got on this? refers then to the the Cohen master's response, which is translated to something we understand, sunyata, emptiness, voidness. So your question, young disciple, the answer is sunyata. That's a good answer. Because I think that's what they refer to when they have the Japanese what we think of as the Japanese Zen symbol or anyway, that's, that's how I understand it because obviously the circle is empty, but it's also one with what is not empty. Uh, that's, that's my interpretation. Well, for those of you who have done koans with me, you know what I'm always telling you, don't make opposites. So, and that's an opposites koan, isn't it? So there's got to be some sideways kind of way out of there. We're not going to go too far down that rabbit hole. But I will tell you what Sun San said. He said, to find the answer, you must ask a dog. His answer will surprise you. <laughs> uh, Oscar, you had unmuted earlier. Did you have a question or comment? Uh, no, I was just... Uh... Yeah, it, it was a question, but it was more like a discussion question. Like you pose a question for everybody. And I was wondering um, how Zen has helped or in what way Zen has helped uh, you guys individually. Uh, I'm just curious about that. But I, I don't know if, you know, if anybody else had other questions, they can, they can ask them. This, this is more like a discussion question. This is great. Can you tell that Oscar is a professional teacher? Is he just, <laughs> right? He's just, he's got the gift. Yeah, so I would actually be interested in hearing, and, and you, you don't have to share if you don't want to. And when we talk about Zen, what do we even mean by that? So 
whatever, however you define your spiritual practice, the meditation, um, hopefully the other parts of the Eightfold Path, because meditation is only two parts of eight. So how does all of that stuff that you do, that you practice with, that you think about, that you contemplate, that you try to live, how has that affected your life? Um, for me, I tend to um, question myself a bit more. Um, uh, I guess I, or another way to put it would be, I call myself on my own bullshit a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I think that's, you know, one, one of the aspects of it. Um, and, you know, that kind of, that kind of equates to, you know, when you're, you're going past meditation and you're kind of bringing the practice into, you know, all your other aspects of your life. You know, when you're at work and your boss says something totally obnoxious and you totally want to go off on him and, you know, you catch yourself more, you know, you, you look for the more skillful things to say to people, um, which um, I really didn't have much of a filter, I think before. Um, <laughs> I'm a lot better at filtering and I'm a lot better at seeing other people's point of view, seeing the other side of it and what they're going through than I used to be. So, Very nice. Thank you, Marion. I would say ac ac acceptance as opposed to resignation. That makes any sense. That's all I have to say. I don't talk much. <laughs> that and makes a lot, a lot of sense. Acceptance uh, as opposed to resignation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank but you, Larry. I I love that. I love that. I mean, that is something that I have learned in my life too, but um, I never really put it into words. So hearing you describe it, it's like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not there all the time, <laughs> but at least I'm aware of it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's where we all are. Yeah. yeah. It's very much a work in progress as long as we're still breathing. Yeah. Yeah, I... I I find it, Zen helps me a lot, like uh, sitting at the vets this morning, or this afternoon actually, waiting for him to look at my dog, and I find it, it helps me to be patient, to just sit there and, and like in a meditative state rather than fretting about things. Yeah, that's a good one. That it, It's helped me with patience a lot too, and it's similar to what uh, Marion was saying. We don't fret about things, and then we don't go off on obnoxious bosses or whoever the person might be. Yeah, I used to have quite the temper many years before I encountered the Dharma, before I learned to meditate, before you all met me. I was a thrower. Boy, of course, I never threw anything valuable, at least not if I owned it. But, you know, so there was that level of awareness. <laughs> but yeah, whoo, did I have the temper as a younger woman. So yeah, this has really calmed me down. And anyone else like to share on this? Tom? I would, um, oh, I'm Val, then Tom. I would like to add that um, that question is uh, kind of like a, a living thing. You know, maybe a couple of months ago, the answer would have been different. But what I can say for today, or within the last month or so, is that um, it helps my running practice. Um, I, um, it, it, it helps me to stay in this idea that I put one foot in front of the other, or I run the mile that I'm in, not how many miles or 
how long it's going to take or how many minutes that mile is or what I'm striving for. It's just do it. You know, not collect books on running, not research running, just physically do it. And, and I, think, I think that has helped me tremendously for today. I could say that. That's great. I love it. Especially right, about right. not collecting the books, just do it. Yes. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have nice. one comment about running specifically. My, mine would be, or not, you know, wishing the run to be less painful than it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just be in the experience. Absolutely. All right, Tom, you had your hand up a moment ago. Yeah, can you guys hear me if I hold the microphone to my mouth? Is that easier? Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Buddhism has taught me to forgive myself and to put my past behind me. Um, and it's a lot of similar things that I hear all of you saying, is to live in the now, not live in the past. Um, and I spent half my life living in my past. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Buddhism has taught me not to, to live now. Um, I'm not the same person I was before. Uh, and, you know, I liked what Val had to say because she says, what it's taught me today is may not be the same thing that it had taught me a few months ago. Well, I'm not the same person I was a few months ago. <laughs> so um, that's what Buddhism has taught me. Um, and that's what I get the most out of it is that, um, you know, I can take the extreme and I was never the Angulimala. I was never the one that chased people around the forest and killed them and hung their fingers on a necklace around my neck. Um, but when the Buddha says, Angulimala, stop, <laughs> you know, um, and he put his past behind him and, and he eventually, uh, you know, became a great disciple of the Buddha. So, uh, and he was a murderous bandit who, you know, turned his whole life around and, and kind of became the, uh, uh, in, in Theravada tradition, he kind of became the patron saint of, of uh, birthing mothers. Um, and so he would be called to come and comfort them when they were giving childbirth. Um, and, and he was well known for that. So anyway, um, you know, Thich Nhat Hanh just used to tell stories about Angulimala to his, his Dharma classes. And, uh, and <clears throat> I think really, I, and I guess in summation is uh, I, I've learned to just accept that whatever happened in my past helped form me into who I am now. Um, but who I am now will not be the same person as I am tomorrow. Um, so, it kind of gets into that loss of the person I, you know, that loss of identity. Um, and I like that. That's, uh, that's been greatly helpful to me along all levels of both mental health and physical health. That's wonderful. Yeah, sometimes it's easier for us to forgive other people than to forgive ourselves. And we use these labels. Um, we may have done something in the past and then we label ourselves by saying i am this i am this thing but we're not right we're, we're so much more than that we're so much more complex than any one thing that we may have done in the past plus if that were really our defining characteristic we'd still be doing it so if we're, we've been able to, to stop that thing stop hanging fingers around our necks then we're not the hanger of fingers anymore. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that that has been a help for you. That's been f helpful for me too. Yeah. Oscar, you posed the question. Did you want to share anything? I'm putting you on the spot, but you can always say no. I think what Zen helps me is like, uh, just to be in the present moment, like what you guys are saying, you know, when I start stressing out about, what's going to happen in an hour or two or later on the evening or next week or next month, then it's just like, I remember Sun San's word, you know, don't go just 
don't know, just go straight. And then, like like Val said, just run, you know. Like what you guys have all said, just living in the moment and um, helps me practice. Even when I don't want to meditate or don't want to do a chore or don't want to – whatever it is, I, I just do it. And then once I'm doing it, it's not as – because I forget that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what it is for me. Thank you. Yeah, that's an, another good point. We we build things up in our imaginations. It, it's like when I, I used to be afraid of needles. Um, I really don't like getting injections. They hurt. And uh, I especially don't like getting blood drawn. My veins tend to move. And so it, they have to stab me multiple times. Um, and I got over it very quickly when I had cancer because you get stuck so many times a week, you, you lose count. You're always getting your blood drawn or you're getting this shot or that shot or the chemo pick lines going in or something. And what I discovered is it's never as bad as I remembered it as being. I always thought it was gonna be this horrible thing. And then when it happened, it was really no big deal. Yeah, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes you get a really good phlebotomist it doesn't hurt at all. Um, but I had made this thing I had made something concrete out of this experience. Oh, it's going to be horrible. Eh, no, not really. So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's what Oscar's comments made me think of. It's don't, don't build up something because it's usually not as big a deal as you think it's going to be. Uh, yesterday, we had all these dishes in the sink, and I'm like, oh, my God, how it's going to take me forever to do these dishes. And... I've told some of you before, I actually enjoy doing the dishes. I do mindful dishwashing practice. So I just kind of sl slowed down my breath, got into the, the practice, smelled the smell, the lemon smell of the dish soap and the squeaky clean of the dish. And, and I had a really nice time. It was very pleasant. And the next thing I knew I was done in about half the amount of time that I thought it was going to take me. So just be here now. Does anyone else have any other questions? You don't have to. We can move forward with our sitting practice. All right, that tells me it's time to sit. So get comfortable. <laughs>